Hello everyone, this is Wilson again. We are going to continue to talk about limit problems today. So if you look at this limit here, this is a function involving a radical. And so if you have seen my other videos, then you know that to deal with radicals, then a uh, easy way to do it is to multiply by the conjugate. But we cannot just blindly do that for the problem. We also need to make sure at the beginning that when we substitute the zero into the function, it's approaching in indeterminate form of zero over zero. In that case, then we can actually start doing um, the technique of multiplying by the conjugate. But right now, let's actually try to plug in the zero and check first. Okay, so um, we are going to write down the form which is the square root, right, with the x square. So I'm going to turn it into a blank, plus 9, and then minus 3, and then all over, so some number. And then now we are going to let x approach 0, so we plug in the 0 in there. But remember, we are not really dividing by 0. We are actually dividing by a number that's really close to 0. Either it's positive or negative. Right, but just remember, it's still non-zero right here, right? This this is really just symbolic. Okay, now, um, so the numerator is actually uh, approaching, well, let's just look at this radical first. So we have zero square and that's approaching zero plus nine, that's approaching nine. So we are actually getting the square root of nine, right? And then minus three, and then at the bottom is still approaching zero. So now you can see that the square root of nine is what is three. So three minus three, the top is also approaching zero. And then the bottom is approaching zero. So we are getting this indeterminate form. Okay, so we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate so that we can see if there is any factor that we can cancel out. Okay, so we are going to start by writing down the original function, the square root of x squared plus 9, and then minus 3. And then, oh, actually, let's just multiply by the conjugate first. So for the numerator, we have the conjugate to be x squared plus 9, and then plus 3. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that when we talk about the conjugates, we are talking about changing the sign between the two terms. Okay, so it looks like there are three terms here, but we are still just having two terms. Um, we are treating this radical as one turn, and then we are, treat, uh, we are treating this three as the second turn. And what happened is that we are going to change the just this minus sign, right? We are going to put a plus sign between the radical and then the three. Okay, so we are not changing anything inside the radical. We are treating this radical as just one object, okay? So don't change the sign inside the radical. We are changing the sign that's outside, that's between the radical and the three. Okay, so now we also need to worry about the denominator, right? We are going to multiply also the denominator by whatever that we multiply to the top. So we have x squared plus 9 and then plus 3. Okay, so that's how we start the problem. And then from there, we just need to just recall again, right? We, we got to recall something right here. That's really important to remember, which is that when we multiply a minus b times a plus b, we are actually getting the difference of two squares. So we get a squared minus b squared. So basically, we are squaring the first turn, we're squaring the second turn, and then we subtract them. And so now we have a minus b, and then a plus b. So what we are going to get is that in the numerator, we are going to square the first turn. So we got to square the square root. The square and the square root will cancel out. So we are just getting the x squared plus 9. And then now we got to square the second turn. The second turn is 3. We square it. We are going to get 9 here. And then don't forget that we got to subtract them, right? So make sure that you put a minus sign right here. This minus sign, this orange minus sign comes from here. And then you may say, what about the denominator? Well, for now, don't do anything in the denominator. Just leave it. 
Okay, so we are going to just write down, just copy the denominator. Then you may say, so we just distribute the x to both terms inside the parentheses for the denominator. Um, it's unnecessary. You will see why in, in the next step, why we are not going to do that. Okay, so as you can see here, we have plus 9, minus 9, right? We can actually just combine them. And then upon combining them, then it becomes 0. So you're actually just getting x squared at the top. Okay, so we are getting... We're just having an x squared in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we still have all that stuff. Now, the reason for why I said that it's unnecessary to distribute dx is really because you are going to start doing the canceling right here. So if you have distributed the x to both terms inside the parentheses, then you are not going to be able to cancel the, the x from the top. Okay, so that's why we just leave it in the factor form. It's actually better in this case. And then you may say, why do we factor? Uh, I mean, why do we multiply? Why do we expand the top from, from the beginning? It's really because we want to cancel all the, 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 um, the extra turns that we have so that now we can do the canceling. So usually the trick is this, expand the top in this case because we're multiplying by the conjugate. So it's not always the top. So all you, all you need to do is to usually to expand the one that you are multiplying the conjugate by. But for the other one, just leave it in the factor form. Okay, so in, for this step right here, we can start canceling the x and the x squared. So to do that, we are going to be getting uh, the x got canceled and then the x squared we cancel out one copy of the x in there. So we are left with just one copy. And so now our problem becomes just the x at the top. Okay, just the x. And then what about the denominator? Just that red expression, right? So I'm just going to, uh, instead of writing in red, I'm just going to leave it right now. Okay, so from here, we are not getting an indeterminate form of 0 over 0 anymore. We can do a direct substitution. So we can actually just start substituting. Okay, just start substituting the 0 in there. Okay, so we have the square root of something squared plus 9 and then plus 3 right here. What do we substitute in there? We are going to substitute the 0 in there. And then now you can see what's going on um, at the bottom. It's going to give you zero square. That's what that's that's zero plus nine. We get nine square root of nine is what it's three and then plus three. You know that the bottom is non-zero. That's all we care. It's because we already see that the top is approaching zero. So if you're actually just getting zero divided by a what a non-zero number in this case, if you do the calculation, you're going to get six, but it's actually unnecessary. We just need to make sure that the bottom it's non-zero, then you don't really need to show this. What I mean by that is that if you get this bottom part so that we know that this bottom part here is non-zero, as you can see, it's actually six, right? Because you get three plus three, you get six right here. Then and if the top is approaching zero, then you can actually just come up with the answer really easily. What is that? That's actually just approaching, what do we get? It's zero. Okay, so the final answer is zero. And that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel, check out my other videos and leave me a comment, give me a like, right? Please also share my videos to others. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.